I know Spencer would probably tell us not to question him, but he's one of eight uh, on the night, and Denny heaves him that pass in the corner anyways, just like you drew it up. Oh, yeah. We work on that all the time. Um, we knew at some point they were going to junk it up. You know, they, they've shown the propensity to do that. Well, we saw in the playoffs last year, and they're very good at it. Um, so, you know, whether it's zone, blitz, hit, trap, um, you know, it's something we were mindful of. Denny made the right play. Flash to the middle. Middle's wide open. Um, he found the nearest guy, and Spencer, you know, big time play, he hit a hit a huge shot for us. Uh, Gafford in particular had a huge third quarter, but why did you want the group that was on the group at the end to be there? Just the feel, and you know, nothing that Gafford didn't do is just. Uh, um, I, I liked, you know, Denny Trez um, in that group. Um, we had to get Daniel out; he didn't run his minutes, but I like down the stretch uh, staying with that group. Um, you guys had 19 turnovers, got out rebound, hit a lot of offensive boards. What did it take to kind of grind this one out? I mean, it's it, it's one of those games where you look at the stat sheet, and you know, Giannis has 29, and we turned the ball all over, especially our first half. You know, luckily we had only eight in the second for six points, but um, you know, those possessions earlier they hurt. You know, we were able to hold on. Uh, I think down three at the half, which was a miracle, but. Uh, uh, just a gritty game, you know, the fact that once again, we've, we've tried to find a way you know, we got stops when we needed it. Um, we came up with those rebounds, big plays at the rim, you know, coups with the block, um, you know, Trez has a big one late. So it's a myriad of things, but you know, all those put together, it's a, it's a, it's a gutty win. I thought he was great. Honestly, his defense was uh, was tremendous. And I, I have to give all of our guys credit. You know, we knew going in this was going to be a challenge. Um, and you know, once again, you're, you're guarding one of the best players in the league. Um, so you look at the stats, and you're like, well, it didn't go so well. I thought it went great. I thought Denny was terrific. Kuz was great on him. Um, you know, guys made plays late, and that's, that's just how it has to be. I think just our overall um, urgency to start the quarter. Um, you know, we had the momentum going um, and we kind of jumped out a little bit, which helped give us a cushion. Um, we didn't sustain it so much, but, you know, we, we started to make shots and found a rhythm with what we like, given with uh, how they were guarding us. So it's something we can kind of stick with and uh, exploit to a certain extent. When you have a first half like that, when you guys have 11 turnovers, um, what's kind of the message to the team to, to clean it? Oh, you know, you showed some of the clips and, you know, some of those plays are high risk, high reward. Um, and they were great with their hand activity, the deflections, um, and just giving our guys, uh, you know, insight of what to look for. Like we're trying to make force this one play, but the play is behind that. And I thought we started to find that a little bit in, in third quarter. And what does it say about Daniel Gafford's abilities, his potential, that, that block that he, he made on Giannis to, to trail on the whole drive with that play? That's, that's a, very few people can make that play. <laughs> um, you know, we've talked at length about his ability to do that. It, he, it's special. Um, and when he's, he's locked in and he can do that um, without taking himself out of position, you know, where there's purpose behind it and he's in the right spot early, you know, at times. And it's tough, you know, the, the amount of shooting they can put on the floor. You know, not just this team, but a lot of teams, uh, those stretch fives, you know, he, he gravitates to the rim. And I think that's just in his nature. Um, he's able to make those plays. But I, I think as we've gone along, he's done a better job of playing with purpose and understanding when to go and when not to go um, and, and being more mindful of that. From your perspective, what kind of adjustment do you think it is for Brad to uh, playing now with CD veterans, people who can I'm sure there's a level of comfort, you know, knowing that he doesn't always have to be the guy. He's going to attract attention no matter what he does. Um, and at times, and I'm sure he's aware, he has to, you know, absorb that, you know, uh, that that pressure and knowing that he can get off of it and trust someone else to make a play. Do you think you should do But, not yet. Not yet. But I mean, it's two-time MVP. He's got no doubt. With minimal help, some help, but with minimal help, how do you think he handles that 
all of it, the training without fouling, putting the body on for the test, all of it. No, I think it was, uh, he, he was great. And I, I know it's, uh, it's not fair to say, hey, it's all on you, Denny. But I, he had a number of really good possessions where he was able to just wall up, you know, absorb that contact, um, not get over anxious and, and, and make plays over the ball and get himself in foul trouble. Um, there were probably like five or six plays throughout the course of the game. I'm like, man, that's that's pretty good. You know, even if he does make a tough shot, that's great defense. You know, if he can do that nightly, we'll live with it. Do you think he's getting that the offense may come and go, but that's how you can earn minutes? Is that that? Absolutely. <laughs> you, you do that every night, you will earn minutes. And, you know, obviously, uh, when we do defend at a high level, you know, it allows us to get out and run. I think that makes for easy offense for everybody. We'll go to Zoom now. Davide. Hi, Coach. This is uh, Davide from Italy. Um, congrats for the win. Uh, you guys are seven, seven and three now. Um, what do you think is behind your early success? Uh, I think the you know the nature of our group. We've been able to pull together relatively quickly um, with so many new pieces, new new, new coach, obviously uh, staff and philosophy. It's a lot to to ask. But, uh, you know, for the most part, our guys have been great with their effort, but uh, it, it also locked in as far as what we're trying to do. Uh, I think big picture, they're, they're, they've seen now, um, and, and that's where you get more buy-in, you know, the better understanding of how to play, uh, what kind of shots we want, um, and that, that keeps that ball moving. And when that happens, I think uh, we're at our best. Wayne. Hey, Coach, this is the second night that uh, you've held a team under 100 points. Uh, what do you credit that to? Uh, you know, great defense. Obviously, they didn't shoot it well. Um, you know, I think it's uh, it's a lot of things. You know, we've been better defensively. We're better tonight as far as taking care of the paint. And I think if we cut down those turnovers even more, it would, it would help in that department. Mm -hmm. But uh, just our overall understanding now, I think we, we got a feel for – um, certain concepts, situations, there, there's less thinking. Guys are now just playing and reacting. Um, so that cohesiveness is, is starting to come. And as you uh, go to your next matchup with the Cavaliers, what are some of the things that uh, strikes you about this roster? About our roster or? The Cavaliers, the Cavaliers roster. I mean, they're, they're versatility. Obviously, they're missing a few guys right now. I'm not sure where that stands, but uh, they're playing much better. Um, you know, they have dynamic guards. Um, you know, obviously their front court is, is huge. So we're going to have to find a way to, you know, um, match that, you know, uh, the shooting, you know, with love off the bench, it can be a problem. But once again, we're not overly concerned with them right now. We have two days. Uh, we're going to enjoy tonight, um, get back at it, watch film, clean up some things, and then uh, prepare uh, for Wednesday. Thanks, Coach. Last question to Matt. Uh, hey, Coach, it seemed like especially in the first half that you guys switched more on D than you had. Is that my imagination or is that part of the game plan? Uh, actually, no. It was more uh, we were down the floor a lot with our fours and fives. Uh, we did get into some late switches, you know, and, and that, that usually happens when the big is down the floor. They get engaged a little bit. You know, at some point you have to kind of read it because you don't want to continue to pursue with two on the ball. Um, so it, it kind of looks like a late switch, but in general, we're, we're trying to entice the tough contested, you know, that mid range to long paint too. Um, you know, take away the rolls, the lobs, if we can, as well as limit the three. So I know it, it sometimes it appears that way. We got into some switches late in the game, which was good for us, but in general, we were more down the floor. Well, to have a 12 point advantage in the, the third quarter, what changed at halftime for you? Uh, I mean, the key is always going to be getting stops. Um, you know, they're a hell of a team, uh, obviously defending champs. Uh, we drew back in the fold, two of their big threes back. I mean, obviously they're still missing Brooke as well, but well, Chris obviously is the big three, but Brooke as well. Um, but still extremely formidable team and Giannis is MVP. So you just got to get stops, load to them. And uh, some of that's been missing in uh, threes as well. And can you walk us through uh, the, the shot you made in the final minute there? Um, you know, obviously we were just trying to get Brad some space. Uh, they sent two, ball went to Denny. Denny made a good find. Uh, I was fortunate enough to knock it down. What did you think of Brad's performance tonight? Oh, big time. 
I mean, but that's that's what you expect. He's an All NBA type of performer. Uh, he's average thirty in the league now, what multiple seasons in a row. Uh, so you know, we we need him to have big performances like that for us to be an elite level team. What kind of lift did it give to the give to the team the shot clock violation that the Bucks had in the first half, where I think it was he was hounding Allen, uh -huh. um, and Wes. Even Wes, I think, gave him a high five. Yeah. Normally reserved Wes Unsell Jr. Yeah. Oh, I mean, anytime you have big time effort plays from your star, uh, it, it's a huge uh, for the team just because we see him out there giving his all. Um, so obviously, it inspires us to do do the same. Uh, Spencer, we've been talking to Denny a lot about how he's been missing kind of bunnies at the rim, and he's still getting his sharpness back there um, from yeah. when he injured himself. To make that find, like you said, and is that instinct? Is that him kind of fighting through whatever doubts he may have on the other end and just and just doing it? Can you speak a little bit to that mindset and confidence, if that's what it is? Yeah, I mean, obviously, he's a first-round pick, top 10, I believe, right? Um, so clearly, he can play. Basketball IQ is high. You know, you're typically your European players, uh, basketball IQ is very high. Uh, he's been out there making extremely great plays on defense. I think that's what's kept him in the rotation. And then, you know, from there, it's just about kind of letting the offense flow. If you're doing the right thing on defensive assignments, you're going to earn minutes. And then from there, like, just, just make the right basketball play. If you miss a bunny, like, you're an NBA man, like, you're going to make those. Like, you know what I'm saying? I tell them all the time, like, don't worry about it. Like, you know, everybody's missed layups before. So it's not a big deal. If you if you couldn't make a layup, you probably wouldn't be an NBA, bro. So it's not that big of a deal. But that's, that was a big play on his end. What is your kind of style of, I, I don't know if you want to call it mentorship there. Like we see Trez out there kind of barking and talking all game and we know how Brad works. How do you communicate with guys like that? Uh, I'm pretty much just like straightforward to the point. Uh, I don't really get too high or too low. I feel like you guys seen it now with, you know, big shots or whatever. And then also in terms of talking to people, you know, I think uh, when Danny got that tech, when we were up 25, I told him, I was like, yo, bro, look, don't do it again. But if there's any time you was going to do it right now, it work. At that point, don't matter. You feel me? But I'm not to paying your tech, though. It was stupid. Spence, I, I know the, a lot of guys are new to D.C. and new to the town, but mm -hmm. this this doesn't happen very often, what you guys have done to start the season here. And I just wonder, when you're used to winning, I know this is, probably isn't as big a deal, Yeah. but when a franchise isn't used to winning, how important do you think it, it is to get off to a good start? Um, I think it's super important because obviously when a franchise isn't used to winning, you can uh, go into the tank, you know, very easily, very early. So starting off uh, well, having good morale, uh, it inspires that confidence. And then when we do hit the lows, because inevitably we will, right? Uh, you're able to pull yourself out of it because you you know the, the level that you're capable of playing at. Um, I mean, I've been on good teams, been on bad teams, and you know, uh, the the marker of a good team is not having those lows last, uh, not getting too high on the wins, but being very consistent. So, you know, that's what we hope to do. What do you think when uh, Daniel Gafford recovered against Giannis and, and blocked him at the rim like that? Oh, I mean, honestly, uh, you know, Giannis being an MVP, so it's big time. But at the same time, like, Gaff is one of the elite athletes um, at the center position. Uh, I've said it before, like, there are some comparisons to Jared Allen. I think he's a more fluid athlete. Obviously, Jared has his strengths that he's better than Gaff at. Um, but, you know, that's not something that we should be shocked by, right? We should we should definitely give credit where it's due, but we expect those plays out of him because he has the talent and ability, you know what I'm saying, to do that and do that consistently. So, you know, I, I think uh, Gaff's going to be at a high level in sleep for a long time. Spencer, have you ever paid anybody's tech before? Uh, Shoot, I don't know. I don't think so. I'm, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm kind of a generous guy, so it may have happened. <laughs> you know, you'd have to ask like like a Jared or something like that, because that was that was my guy. But uh, I definitely wasn't paying nobody with no money, like <laughs> Joe Harris or some South Brad <laughs> dumb out. <laughs> no problem. Now we're going to the virtual. Hey, Spencer, you touched on it a little bit, you know, never get too high, never get too low in a game. Is there anything, is it just like short-term memory for you, you know, not necessarily your greatest shooting performance, but as soon as you get that ball from Denny, just kind of laser focus and do your thing? 
Hey, look, man, I told y'all when I got here uh, in training camp, and I also told y'all after, like, the second game or something like that, if we take out the season, I was hurt. I've been one of the most clutch players in the league, period. Like, that's what it is. Ain't no fear, man. Like, at the end of the day, a lot of people get all scared and whatnot, and they be, like, all nervous because, like, they think about missing it or whatever. Like, I feel like I work harder than everybody else. So, like, why should I be scared? Like, I tried my best. I gave them all. If I miss, I miss. As so honestly, I don't really care. And that's why it be going in, I feel like. Because a lot of people get all like, uh-oh. And that's when you miss. So, you know, I, I hope to continue to be clutch for our team. Um, you know, like I said, back then, it's Brad's play to make. Today, he uh, passed the rock to Denny. Obviously, it found me uh, in like the, you know, almost corner. And he just shoot the ball, man. Like, I got a son. It's bigger things in life. Appreciate it, Spencer. Honestly, it was our defense, you know. Uh, we, I don't know, I didn't look at the box score, but I know we we made it tough on them. We know it's a team that loves to get in the paint and kick out for threes. Giannis is really talented at that. He's really good at reading defenses. And we threw a bunch of them at him. You know, we threw some doubles at him. You know, we went one-on-one -on -one solid straight up against him, put bigger bodies on him. You know, um, everybody, everybody that guarded him contributed, you know, started with Kuz, you know, Gav. And Denny came in and closed it awesomely, you know. So uh, I think just making it tough on him, you know, he's he's going to get his numbers, he's going to get his boards, uh, you know. So just just really making it tough on everybody, and then offensively, you know, the ball is fine again tonight. Uh, the block that Gafford had on Giannis, uh, coach said that that's a play that not many people can make. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your perspective as you saw that happen? Uh, I mean, coach is right, you know, because one, not everybody has the same body type as Giannis. You know, he's a freak. Uh, Freak athlete, and obviously, no pun intended, but his name. I mean, he, I mean, it speaks for itself. Um, but Gaff is a freak too. You know, Gaff is a freak athlete. Uh, he has strong legs, um, big body. So you know, it was it was kind of big on big meet at the rim. You know, and you know, he may have laid the ball up a few times, but Gaff, you know, he's going to contest a good amount of them, and that block was huge for us. So uh, you know, Gaff is getting better night in and night out of understanding, you know, how he can impact the game on a defensive end for us and. You know, he's constantly doing that. Brad, how are you feeling with the adjustment to playing with new teammates, particularly new teammates who are seasoned veterans who can contribute when uh, given the opportunity? Uh, it feels great. Uh, you know, not having to make every play, do everything. I can really focus on a lot of other things in the game, especially my defense. Uh, but more or less, you know, it's, it's an amazing feeling knowing that, you know, you have vets and when it's time to close out a game and win a game, they're prepared. You know, they know what to do. And we're all, you know, camaraderie wise are ready to go. And you can look at the guy next to you and know that he's been in this trench before. So uh, it's, all, it's an unbelievable feeling. You know, we're, we're still not perfect. We still have a lot of things we need to work out and get better at. But, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely the strides in the right direction. Brad, I feel like you've said the past couple of years, you've just like mentioned at the beginning of the season, defense is something that you've been wanting to work on. What has Wes had you focus on to like actually get to the point where he's, like the first thing he said about your performance tonight, he was like, I thought it was great on defense and you had 30. What is he telling you to hone in on? Uh, it's really not anything he's telling me. It's, it's kind of me challenging my mentality, you know, um, cause I can defend and I know I can defend and it's just a matter of just doing it. You know, um, coach has his schemes and he has his, um, you know, methods of how he wants us to garb. And he challenges me just like he challenges everybody else. Uh, but I know I have to, you know, at the end of the day, I still have to get in a stance and I still have to want to defend and guard. So ultimately it's me, you know, just getting out there and just taking that challenge, accepting those challenges. Um, and getting into a stance and, and getting the job done, you know, because we have guys who, who can score the ball. You know, if it's not my night, you know, we have guys who can score the ball. We have guys who can make plays. So. You know, I have other areas in the game in which I can really dial into and focus and get teammates involved. We've talked to you after nights where you've had 40 points, 50 points, whatever. What is your, I guess, level of like physical effort feel like after a night where maybe you don't have to score all those points, mm -hmm. but you are playing more defense. You have help on both ends. Like, no, are it's still you more tiresome. tired? <laughs> like, it's still tiresome. Like, people get it twisted. Like, playing defense is tiresome. Uh, yeah, like, that's, it's, it's like... that's very hard. It's very hard to do. Um, and it's very, that's why it's a mental challenge because you have to stay in the stands and stay engaged for 24 seconds, you know, and God forbid they get off his rebound, they get 14 more, you know, so it's, it's understanding that and, you know, how can you create, create an advantage for you and your teammates? You know, obviously, we know Giannis is a very ball dominant guy. He's, 
we we have chances to load up off of them and you know it kind of gives us that little breather of not having to guard guys who dribble all the time but you know just his pressure and the pressure of the team and they cut hard and they screen hard like it still it still wears you down so I still feel like I played a, a, a playoff game tonight but um at the same time I do feel good I feel my body feels great Brad it's it's still early I know but you guys are winning in, in different ways pretty much every night. And when it when you see something like tonight, when when Gaffer blocks Giannis and and Kuz has a block in the fourth quarter and Denny makes the right read and the right play, and then when he knocks down the three to kind of put the game away, what does that what type what type of what does that do to your belief system about this group and what's possible? A lot. I mean, because I can speak on Denny. Uh, I turned the ball over late in the game. Denny cut. I threw it to him. I feel like he was a little too far. And I think Collins and jumped. Pat jumped the ball and, and stole it. Uh, that second, same play. He jumped me again. I hit him in the middle. He came a little bit closer, so he met the ball. And you know, I trust everybody. You know, um, doesn't matter who's in the game. And at the end of the game, it, it required me to do that more, get off the ball. You know, I already turned it over more than enough. So you know, being able to trust my teammates in those situations is, is they, I wish I could really explain how it feels, but it's, it's amazing, you know, because it shows our growth and our maturity because in years past, we wouldn't, wouldn't close out these close games. You know, we would fumble it, find out a way to trick it off. You know, we, we really locked in, buried in. One got stops and then two on offense, we took our time and make sure we executed and got, got a big shot by Spence. Neil. Hey, Brad, when, when you got switched onto Grayson and he forced that shot clock violation, you know, you and Wes, you know, dapped up. What kind of just energy or, you know, excitement does that give you in the moment? A lot, man, because he's, Coach Wes is, he's very mellow. You know, he does, he's not too high, he's not too low. Um, but you could tell he's engaged, he's excited, you know, about their play. And he, he pushes me, you know, and to see, I can hear him over there yelling, like, switch, get up, get into him. Don't, you know, don't let him shoot. Like, that motivates me to, okay, let's get a stop, you know, and then sure enough, shot clock violation. It's just it's just energy, you know. Uh, when your coach is like that behind your team and he's engaged and locked in and communicating and telling everybody what to do, like, that's – you love that, you know. Um, and granted, we have to do that more for ourselves on the floor and talking and communicating, not solely on him. But uh, it's, it's an amazing feeling to have, you know, a coach who – who's that engaged and locked in and, you know, who's excited for his team. You know. And so you just touched on it on the turnover on the pass you tried to get to Denny. Is that something that you guys then talked about in the moment? Hey, come back closer to the ball and you guys were able to take advantage like that? For sure. I mean, it's something I've always, I tell our bigs that, you know, cause I get double teamed a lot. I mean, I overthrew Gav in the first half. No, that, that was all on me. Um, cause when they see, when I get two on me, just sit in the pocket. You know, I'm going to throw you the ball. You're going to be wide open to make a play on the backside, you know, and uh, and that's what Denny did. You know, he was able to flash to the middle of the paint, you know, and right at the elbow, free throw line extended catch, and then turn around, make a play face the rim, you know, look at his options, and he found a spin. So, uh, you know, those moments, you know, we, we were able to fix it on the fly, and, and Denny's growth has been tremendous over the last few games. Thanks, Brad. Last question to Davide. Hi, Brad. Davide from Italy here. Uh, you guys are seven and three now. Uh, what do you think is making the difference? Oh, uh, today was daylight saving time, so I think we got an extra hour of sleep. That might have helped. Uh, but no, seriously, I, I mean, it's just our approach to the game, uh, having great vets. Um, you know, who knows what it takes to win, you know, who are true professionals in, in our craft. And we, we really take our day-to-day -day serious and getting better, uh, whether it's film, simple film, or, you know, us going through drills or going through, um, you know, motions of another team, you know. So we, we really bear down and be locked in into, to what we want to accomplish through the day. We try to win every day, you know, and I think that's where it starts. Uh, so, you know, I think it's just our attention to detail, our lock, just how locked in we are coming into practice and shoot arounds and then, in the game, we have fun. You know, that's, that's that's when the most fun comes out. That's where everybody should embrace the next part, next guy. And uh, and we do that. We go out and play for each other. So, you know, like I told you earlier, it's still early. Uh, we're seven and three, but, you know, it's, it's definitely progress in the right direction. What do you think made the difference for you guys, especially in that third quarter, so you outscored them by 12? 
Mm, main difference was just coming out and playing a lot more aggressive than we were in the first half. You know, um, limiting turnovers on our end and just the main thing, taking care of the ball, getting to the offense as much as we can to be able to execute, like, at a high level. That was the main thing. And turning, you know, great defense into easy offense as well. It seems like you and Spencer are developing a pretty good lob combination. Um, mm -hmm. What's it like, uh, the passes that he's throwing to you right now? I mean, it's good. You know, they're not too high or too low. You know, even if they're too high, I could probably go get it. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I always tell the guys, like, when I first got here to Washington, I'm like, you can throw it to the sky. I'm going to try my best to bring it back down. You know, so just really just being in the pick and roll and building that chemistry, we did that early for sure. You know, preseason, everything. And, you know what I'm saying, it's finally showing up. <laughs> And I'd love to get your your thoughts on the block you had on Giannis and just matching up with him in general tonight. Um, you know, one thing about me, I really don't back down from a challenge. Whenever I did, whenever it came to an opportunity that I had switched on him, I wanted to make sure that it was good. I didn't want to be beat off the dribble. He gets downhill, do a slow one two and dunk on me. No, I didn't want to be on the highlight tonight. <laughs> That's my main thing. So really, just you know, playing big boy defense. You know, no fouling. I got one foul on him that, you know, I really shouldn't have gotten. But um, at the end of the day, really just playing solid defense is what got me to where I got the block on him. What did you make of Brad's performance tonight? I mean, you know, Brad comes out and plays that way night in, night out. You know, he gives it all on the floor. And, you know, coming back into the locker room, it's the main thing he says is he leaves it all out there. Um, but other than that, he comes out and he plays great basketball. And it's great to be out there on the floor with a guy like that. What does it mean to you to see that he has support from many people out on the court, people, seasoned veterans who can contribute? And you're one of the people who who's done, who did that tonight. Mm, yeah, I mean, it's great because, you know, if one guy gets hot, the team is going to get hot soon or later because one guy is the lead the pack, and that's Brad. Daniel, I see that you're wearing, uh, as promised, a Sharingan shirt today. Mm -hmm. uh, you can kind of talk us through it. Oh, yeah. You know, this is, um, this isn't like Itachi's Sharingan. This is uh, Kakashi's, you know, the copy ninja. So um, I really like Kakashi a lot because of how he trained Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura, you know, his little team seven. So just, you know, him with like that leader mindset, I really wanted to come in, focus tonight, just have this, you know, put people under my genjutsu. And you're 2-0 with Amaru this year. Yes, sir. So I'm going to make it a trend for sure. And I'm going to make it probably go Naruto, probably go Dragon Ball Z. It's a lot of stuff I'm going to bring out for sure. <laughs> we love a copy ninja. Um, <laughs> Daniel, kind of along the lines of Josh's question, I know obviously you were new to the team last year, so it was a lot of things you were taking in. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the feeling, whether that's in the locker room, your guys' level of chemistry, comfort, whatever, how different does this team feel compared to last year? I mean, it feels good because, you know, we got a lot of depth on this team now. We got a lot of seasoned vets. We got a lot of guys that have been in the league for a good amount of time. So we got a lot of experience. So just really just in the locker room, we got guys that are main, that are really vocal, you know, saying the things that we should do, saying the things that we shouldn't do, trying to keep the team, you know, I would say entangled into the game to where, like, if we're feeling down, we're not making shots or anything like that. We come into the locker room and we adjust and we have the guys talk in and we figure it out to come out in the second half to be able to play as a, as a team and play a lot better on a higher level. So that's the main thing, just having a lot of vets around and hearing more and more talk night in, night out. You talked about that last game, how you kind of, or I think it was last game where at halftime you just kind of had a talk with yourself of like, okay, let's lock in. Did you have to practice so you got good at that so you can just kind of come out and, okay, and now I can actually do that? Yeah, one thing for sure, um, Coming from my rookie season, it was I was always down on myself, you know, missing shots, not blocking shots, messing up on defense, anything. And I used to always get down on myself and used to always impact my game. I used to always go out on the floor and I used to always make dumb mistakes or I used to always make stupid mental mistakes. So um, really just getting better at that was my main focus because me wanting to be out on the floor and helping the team, I can't do that because that brings a lot of bad energy towards the team as well. You know, because one bad apple can make a lot more. That's one thing about it. Neil. Hey, Daniel, can you give us an example of maybe, you know, what was said uh, during halftime today and that led to you guys coming out in the third quarter? You guys won that quarter 33-19. Um, main thing that was said was, you know, we got another 24, you know, basically the score is 0-0 because we got two more halves to go. And 
really that was pretty much it. Came out, have high energy, and doing the right things. That was the main talk throughout the locker room um, at halftime tonight. Thanks, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Last question, Dwayne. Hey, Daniel, uh, last time we talked, you said you pride yourself on defense. How does it feel now to hold two uh, good teams to under 100 points? Um, I mean, it's great because, you know, we took def we had a defensive mindset first and offensive mindset second tonight. Um, like I said, our defense led to easy offense. That's the main thing. So if we play defense like that throughout every game, you know, we'll get easy offense down the stretch, more and more to come.